Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Chisholm Park public meeting, our first virtual public meeting on this project. We appreciate you joining us on this uh, virtual platform. We know it's certainly a little bit different, but as it turns out with it being a stormy night tonight, it might work out a little bit better because we found that people don't love to come to public meetings when it's raining outside. So thank you all so much for taking some time out of your evening to join us. We're going to try and make it quick and fun just so everybody can get the opportunity to interact with us. My name is Kristen Caborn. I am the project manager for this project. I'm a park planner with GAI Consultants Community Solutions Group. I have a whole host of team members here helping us out, both GII staff on our team, on the design team, as well as city staff. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. This project is being recorded, or excuse me, this meeting tonight is being recorded and will be posted on the project website, which is uh, chismparkplan.com. And also, it's very important, if you have questions during the meeting, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We will be answering them. We've got um, some of our team members who are helping us out here. They'll be answering them live um, as we go through the meeting by answering through text or um, typing, but we will also take all of your questions and answer them at the end of the meeting too. So feel free to use it. Um, if you raise your hand, we might miss it. So it's very important to use the Q&A feature and we'll make sure we get to covering everything. So why are we here tonight? We started a master planning process right before COVID began for Chisholm Park. The city identified Chisholm Park as one of the most important parks to begin to look at improvements. As most people know, it was once an Osceola County Park, so now that the city has taken it over, they want to plan for the future of it. So through our planning process, which started right before COVID, we were going to set up at the Battle of Narcosi meet, um, event in late March and take public input that way. And we were going to have some early public workshops that we moved very quickly onto a digital platform. So that began the foundation for the project. We got some public input. Hopefully you all were able to participate through the website. We got some public input through the website and then we used it to build some concept plans that we're gonna be sharing with you tonight. From here, our goal is to move into one final master plan that will guide the city's development future for the park and include some cost estimates for it. So the project website gave an overview of the project. It also had a lot of photographs. So if you hadn't been there recently or if you had not um, visited all different parts of the park, because it's quite large, we wanted to include a virtual tour, um, the opportunity to see a lot of pictures. We ran the initial input platform from May 8th through June 18th. And that was really um, able to facilitate some public interaction and give people something fun to do during the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic. So really quickly, the, pub, the website had three different ways to interact with us. The first one was a comment map where we got 38 responses of people telling us what they loved, what could be better out at Chisholm Park, and you were able to actually drop a comment directly on that spot in the park you wanted to talk to us about. We also had my personal favorite, the Dream Park exercise, where we got 148 responses and this is where we provided different photographs of different things that you could potentially do in the park. And we got input on what, um, what you all wanted to see for the future. And then finally, we had the online survey, which is a traditional online survey where you answered questions. So as a result of that, um, we had strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for each of the parks. We took that information along with the other forms of input, and we were able to form a, pro a program statement. So to us, a program statement means, what do you want to be able to do when you're visiting the park? What's going to make your family be interested in coming, your friends and neighbors going to be interested in coming and enjoying the park for a couple hours or for an entire day? So what we heard was that really keeping it as an opportunity for passive nature users was very important. So having multi-purpose trails where you can walk, you can hike, you can ride your bike, um, lots of opportunities for picnics, both for larger picnic gatherings as well as just smaller um, intimate family gatherings. Nature-themed play was very important. Nobody wanted it to be a 
you know, a bright and colorful eyesore that didn't really blend in with the, nature, the surroundings. Fishing pier, native plants, but also along with the native plants that are Florida friendly, educational, sci um, educational signage about the ecosystems that are available out of Chisholm Park that are very unique. Um, observation tower to be able to look out over the lake. Of course, the beach is very important, much like it is at Lakefront Park, maintaining that beach area. Being able to kayak and boat out of there, possibly even with a concessionaire who could come and rent kayaks to somebody who may not own them. Um, dog parks, and then finally, the support structures that are necessary for a great day in the park, including improving the parking lot and improving the restroom. So we want to start off the meeting with some interaction. This is going to be our poll. This is going to be the warm-up poll. Um, we're going to have six total polls tonight, and this is the first one. So get everybody get ready. You should be able to answer directly on your computer. We heard that nature-themed play was important to participants who use the park. So we have three different pictures here. I don't know, Andre, if you can move the, the box off. Thank you, off the screen. What type of nature play do you like? What do you think would be fun? So we're going to open the poll. There's three types. There's earth mounds, climbing rocks, and obstacle, obstacle course. So you don't have to pick just one. You can pick, all, you can pick two or all three if you want. So we'll go ahead and open the poll, and everybody should be able to click on the button. We'll leave it open here for about... It, which will seem like forever, but probably about 30 seconds. And then when Andrea starts to see the participation numbers, um, she will show us our results. Great, okay, that's, that's really interesting. I love to see that it's really, it's pretty mixed on what people are interested in doing. So we'll make sure that we incorporate a lot of different types of, of nature play in Chisholm Park. Thank you, and that will be recorded. All right, so the result of what we, of what we heard was three concept plans. Keith Orpeza, who's going to be the landscape architect of record on this project, he's the designer that created these concepts. He's going to run you through them real quick. We're going to start with a broad perspective where you can see the entire site, and then we're going to narrow down just so you can expect it, because it's hard to see on a screen the whole site at once since it's so large. We'll narrow it down, and Keith will zoom in and talk a little bit more about the differences in each of the three concepts. So, Keith? All right. Thanks, Kristen, and good evening to everyone. Um, let's take a look at the first concept, and what we're doing is really real sketchy concepts, the big ideas, uh, not trying to get do, too detailed, but really more or less locating different types of activities that you all indicated you might like to see on, on, this, uh, on the park. So as we come into the park along a, a South Lake Drive, the idea is there's, the big idea is actually we're splitting the parking up. We're taking away parking off the lakefront and moving it further into the park, as well as taking trailer parking away from the lakefront. So the idea in this one is, the big idea is, is the lakefront is really just for pedestrians and no automobile traffic, if you will. So as you arrive at this park, we located a dog park just outside the entry. So you, with this parking lot, it would have shade structures, shelters, dog wash, fenced, all the components associated with the, with the dog park. We move into the park. We have, through a gatehouse, boat trailer parking is adjacent to the the, uh, the boat ramp. Then we have the drive for uh, regular um, uses along the entire park instead of just in one location because we have lots of picnic structures and things along the way. So we spread it out. And it also uses the staging area for, for uh, big events like the Battle of Narcusi. It ends with a circular drive at the end where we have a nature uh, walk and trail and access to the, uh, to the rest of the nature trails that lead over to Rumble Road. So this is, con this is just a big idea of uh, concept A. Concept B is not a lot different other than the idea here is we, we're bringing the dog park internal to the park instead of outside. Uh, we have a parking lot down there that would uh, function for the dog park, for disc golf, for the, uh, um, the nature trail and boardwalk around the, uh, the um, uh, wetlands area that's recreated right there. But the basic premise of this one stays the same as concept A. 
And finally, concept C, this is a little bit different. We saw the dog park on the outside, but in this case here, we've kept the boat parking in roughly the same area as it is right now, uh, adjacent to the boat ramp, and then brought the uh, day-use type people for picnicking still internal to the park along the, the, uh, the whole drive, and again, culminates at the end and loops back around so you can come back out. So those are the big movements between the uh, these three areas here. So we can jump into some enlargements and show you a little, little closer what that is. So concept A, the dog park, as you saw. Now, we come to a gatehouse, which is really just uh, an information desk, if you will. So you can, uh, if there's a big event and need direction, that would happen there. You can split off and go towards the boat parking, or you loop back around into the park and go on the main drive that takes you down to the splash pad, the play areas, the ball fields, and you can park along that whole edge uh, um, moving along. Now, in concept B, the difference between that and this is that you see the dog park is not in this location here, but the rest of it functions very similar in, in locations of the uh, boat parking, the play areas, the restrooms, the office buildings, uh, ball fields, that all stays the same. In concept C, again, the parking change, you can see uh, where the uh, existing um, caretaker's house is. That is now still all landscaped with the trees as it was, is. And then we have parking in the same location as, uh, as it is right now for boats. Let's jump to the next one. There we go. Now, internal in concept A, towards the, as you get in, you see we have the loop drive with parking intermittently spaced along the way there. We have a sort of a, um, an arrival place with shade structures and pavilions for a nature boardwalk through the, uh, the um, wetlands area that's recreated right there. Could even be stocked with fish potentially. And it, this area also serves as a trailhead to get us into the, the, uh, the walking trails all through the park. We'll, we'll expand those, improve those, and they all lead out towards Rummel Road. Okay, and this one here, again, the dog park is internal uh, as opposed to the exterior. On the outside, the parking, the, the, uh, the trail, and it's a larger loop drive. We have the disc golf all uh, moving through the whole park. This would happen in all three concepts. It's a, it was one of the things that was uh, cited in, in the surveys early on. And finally, in concept C, um, again, the dog park was on the outside. Uh, we're keeping this pretty open. Everything is open. The idea that big events such as Battle Narcus are important, and we don't want to, to subdivide this up into too many spaces, so we're trying to keep the whole park open from one end to the other. But we're trying to improve the parking a bit here, uh, get the beach access uh, available. Um, in fact, on this one here, we're using a, a hardscape beach and observation towers. Uh, Andre is pointing to it up in that corner there, not unlike what happens at Lakefront Park right now. Okay. Okay, so with that, I'm, I'm going to turn it back over to Kristen uh, um, to take us on a few uh, question and answer sessions here. Yes, great. Thanks, Keith. So as we said in the beginning, we all know how difficult it is to sit on very long meetings and just listen to somebody talk. So we intentionally kept our presentation short and sweet, but now we've got a series of five polling questions. So hang in with us. They're all going to be in a row. And what we're going to ask you to do is help us with the concept plans and what you really want to see. So it's our job as planners and designers to take what we like to call the puzzle pieces of the park and put them together in the best, most organized fashion that makes the most sense for um, the public to use the park in the future. So the first question is what is your preferred location for the dog park? So when Keith was going through the concepts, he talked about um, before they enter, before you entered the park, or the potential if it's inside the park, it would be a little bit further south and part of a hub that included the disc golf and some observation areas on that wetland. So, um, and then of course C is the option for no dog park. So we'll go ahead and open the poll now. And if you would just pick one on this one, please. Great, okay, well, it looks like we've got some great support for a dog park. That's really helpful to know that the preference is to have it before the entry. Thank you very much for, 
for giving us that giving us that information. And just to check on the questions right now, we don't have any questions in the um, question and answer pane. So please, by all means, feel free to ask us questions. If you have any as we go along, we're happy to answer them. Andrea? Next poll question. All right, this is a biggie. This is what is your preferred parking configuration? So, and again, we're gonna ask you to just pick one on this one. Option A is what Keith talked about. This is expanded trailer parking. This would also potentially um, include some relocation of the caretaker area. We would take great care to preserve the nice canopy trees to the best extent possible in this area. But in option A, it would move it away from the beach area and away from the, uh, away from the water's edge. In option B, we're looking at improving the existing parking right where it's currently located. So we'll open up the poll. Okay, this is an interesting split. We're gonna have to dive into this one a little bit more, I think. Thank you all very much for, for answering that. Okay, next question. This is getting into grass parking. And grass parking would be an area that could be overflow for a special event, for a large party, for the movies in the park that have been going on out there during COVID, where we would stabilize the grass so it wouldn't get so mucked up from tires and from heavy rains like we've been having the past couple of days and it would be more functional for parking. Or um, option B is no grass parking. That would just be an open area um, with no overflow but would be open green space for playing. We'll open the poll. Okay, sounds like we've got some support for grass parking. Great, thank you all. This is a really important question and one that we're really excited about. This is thinking about an observation tower. Now, an observation, both, op both options of this observation tower would be fully ADA accessible. So when you're looking at option A, what we're showing by the boat ramp, it has what's called switchbacks, which would be ramps that go back and forth to get you up um, to level and meet ADA access. This would provide the options. So you are looking out over an area of the lake where there is some aquatic vegetation, some plants that are there, but you would also have the view of people launching their boats on the boat ramp and potentially some entertainment for people who, <laughs> who have trouble with that sometimes. Option B is south of the beach area. So this is a ramp that's backing up into the park and gradually, slowly goes out over the water. It is showing a, over much more open water. Um, and then, it, of course, you're not looking over the aquatic vegetation as much. That would be off in the distance. You'd be a little bit further down. And then option C is no observation tower at all. So we ask that you pick just one, please.
Are we getting votes in, Andrea? Ah, there we go. Okay, we're we're split on this one a little bit. Okay, thanks. We appreciate that. We'll we'll keep these results in mind as we move forward. All right, thanks for participating in the polls. We are about done here. I've seen some questions come in. I've been answering them as, as they've come in, but please keep them coming um, because we're almost done. One more thing that we wanted to talk about is the trail connection. It's really important to us and the city really has a commitment to connecting the east side of Lakefront Park all the way to Chisholm Park. So we've started to begin to look at how that is feasible, obviously because it's, um, you know, there's some busy roads. We'll wait till the plan comes up. There we go. So you can see that we would be connecting on the east end. This will be just a really great walking opportunity for people who want to go walk, jog, bike, um, all the way from much further on the west side of Lakefront Park to the east side than picking up at Mississippi and running along Rummel Road. So we're showing the connection. You would see that um, we're looking at the top graphic is what the cross section of the road would look like. We'd have the, the drainage swale. And then the 26 foot right away for cars to drive in. And then a six foot vegetation buffer. This would be trees and plantings to keep the pedestrians safe. And then a 10 foot wide paved asphalt trail. And then six more feet of vegetation on the other side. So it's important to us to provide shade. But as you're coming into the park, into Chisholm Park, on the south side, you would pass Heavenly Hooves, and then we would line up the trail entrance into a trailhead that is on the Chisholm Park side. So when you got there, we would have a nice shade pavilion, bike racks, so you could park your bike and join up with the trails that we're proposing and go in and use all of the fun new things to do in the park, um, or you could bike in as well. But it will be a nice respite resting place along the, along the trail to come into the park and have a safe place to get some shade and relax. Okay. So we are actually done with the formal part of the presentation. I'm going to leave this up for a few more minutes while we work on answering questions. I think since we're done and I've got some open questions, I'm just going to go ahead and answer these live um, for the ones that haven't been addressed yet. And please, by all means, keep them coming. Mark says, not as much a question as a point of order. In concern to disc golf, please consult with a disc, co disc golf course designer. It will help with safety concerns and create a course that people will return to play. Yes, absolutely, and we understand that. We worked with several of them in the, um, in the Central Florida area before, and we do know that. For the purposes of this plan, we'll just do some cost estimating associated with it, but when it gets to actually building it and for those of you all who've been to the one up in um, BVL at Veterans Park, that one, we worked on that one years ago, and we did work with a local course designer on that. So you can rest assured that that will be taken care of. Um, from Janine, she'd really love to have a bike trail. That's great. Um, we are really, that's important to the city and something that we think will really do um, great in connecting Lakefront Park to Chisholm Park. But then as the city continues to expand east, it gives the opportunity to look at connectivity along Narcusi Road and some further points east in the city. So thank you for letting us know that. Okay, let's see here. Response to the number of disc golf holes. 18 ideally, but nine minimum. I know the Orlando disc golf president tagged himself in the comments so you can get professional course design input. So it's worthwhile putting a quality, challenging course for both beginners and advanced play. One of the fastest growing sports in the world. Agreed. Yep. Um, we, I think there's plenty of land out there and there's lots of interesting areas for holes. So I, we will look to plan in 18. And Keith, do you know off the top of your head, are we showing 18 holes in the concept plan? Yes, we did, but they may be short. You know, we got a lot of, of uh, room to move around in. We were keeping it to the perimeter, uh, just using some more beginner level kind of uh, distances. But when we consult with the con uh, with the experts on that, we'll get a layout that would uh, open that all up um, as it should be appropriately. But you see 18 holes is totally feasible, right? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, great. And that's a really good point. I've, I know we've got a couple other questions, and we'll definitely take those as we're um, before we wrap up. So feel free because it's only 6:30. We'll stay um, as long as you need us to to take care of the questions that you all have tonight. We're very grateful that you're here. But the phase we're in right now, we're just doing the planning phase. So we can give the city the site plan, um, how it will all lay out. But then most importantly the cost of it. And then the city will have to move forward with budgeting it, budgeting the construction. Before any construction place takes place, we have to actually do construction documents. So the city would hire an engineer, landscape architect to actually take this through the full design phase. So we're still a ways out from any of that happening and I wanna make sure everybody understood that. So we had another comment that trees are the best part. Um, I answered that with a typed answer earlier, but I do wanna reiterate that we completely agree. That's what really makes this park, this park special. And it provides really a nice nature respite in an otherwise pretty urban area. So we totally agree and we're very happy to be sensitive to the trees and make sure that the tree canopy is preserved for now and for future generations. Okay, Cindy says, we live on Rummel and are very excited about the bike trail. However, the traffic is of great concern for safety. Is there a plan to manage that in the future? Yes, absolutely. And that's gonna be important when we look at entrances into the park that we're lining up with intersections. There's the big bend in Rummel Road. And that's why, um, and Andrea, could you go back to the, um, there we go. Where the big bend in is in the road, that's why we have the entrance to the park. If you could arrow, or if you could just kind of take your cursor around it. Um, that's why we have the entrance to the park as far east as we do, because if people, I mean, we know people would never speed, but if people take that corner a little too fast, we don't want to surprise them with a pedestrian who's crossing the street into the park. So we will definitely look at appropriate crossing distances, make sure we're away from any blind curves and that there's plenty of warning for for um, pedestrians and making that crossing because we recognize that. So we'll be, when it gets into design, that's something that we'll be really cautious of. And that's the reason why the trail entrance into the park does not line up directly across the street with the intersection of that subdivision over just a little to the west because that, that keep going that's just too close to the bend in the road. And we wanna make sure that we're crossing in safe places. So the ball fields would go away. No, absolutely not. The ball field is still shown um, and it's still part of the plan. You can see it right there on the poll questions, but yes, the ball field um, stays, absolutely. In all of the concepts. Why don't you leave one of those up, Andrea? Pick one of them. Just leave up the big master plan for now. Okay, great. So our next steps, we can leave this one up while we're um, while we're wrapping up here. The next steps will be to take the input that we have tonight. We've still got the website up, chismparkplan.com. Um, as we work towards doing the final concept, we will go to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board um, of the city. We will take all of the public input that we've gotten to date and the uh, draft conceptual plan and cost estimate that we come up with and then um, be wrapping up the project. So I don't have any other open questions. We will hang out. I see we still got some attendees on. So happy to hang out for a little bit longer. And if anybody else wants to type in any questions, we'll take them live. It's 6.32 right now. So we'll stay these, on till about These results will all be put onto the website, correct? Yes, yep. All of this will be available on the website and we will keep the website current with the phase of the project. Yep. So we'll stay on until about 6.40 just to make sure no one else has any questions and um, that way we can make sure everybody gets their answers. But thank you all. I get, oh, is there a best email address to write about this project? Yes, it is on the website. Um, let me pull that up. You can send input through the website, chismparkplan.com. Oh, Andrea's got it pulled up there. At the very bottom, 
there's contact us. And then when you click contact us, it sends an email to Stephanie Holtkamp, the Parks and Recreation Director for the City of St. Cloud. So we will get all the comments. Stephanie will share anything that comes in. Okay, we have another question that came in. Is there currently access to the trails from Rummel? Um, the trails, I'm not sure which trails you're talking about, Brenton. Are you talking about the trails that are in the park existing right now? I, there, I don't believe there is. I believe that the way that the fence is, there's not a break in the fence except for, for the driveway for Heavenly Hooves. Heavenly Hooves has access to those trails throughout. Right yeah, now. yeah. And so we'll continue. So having the trail that, yes, so um, thanks for typing in questions, Brett, and we're with you here live. Um, it is a new concept to have pedestrian access and a trailhead on Rummel that allows pedestrian access into the park. So, and that's an important distinction. We don't anticipate cars being able to drive into the park from there. We w might have a parking spot or two for, um, you know, a handicapped parking spot and another spot or two at the trailhead. So if someone wants to park on the south end of the park and come in and hike, they can, but that will not be the primary parking place to serve the park. There might be tent spaces there, maybe. Maybe. But the trail, there are existing trails in the park right now. It's just that as a, if you're walking in, there's really nowhere to walk along there, and then you're, there's, not a, there's not an open access from that side of the park. And if you see right there by the letter O where the parking is um, down towards the end, that will be a trailhead entry into those trails that connect from there all the way over to Rummel. So you park down there versus up towards the entrance of the park. So you you're right there at the trails. Yes. So yes, it is a new concept to be able to have the trail access both from the lakefront to Chisholm, but then the trailhead access from Rommel Road into Chisholm Park to pick up with those beautiful trails that run along the trees and through the tree canopy. We'll, we'll hang out for about five more minutes. I don't see any more open questions, but again, I just want to really thank everybody for joining us tonight. We know at the end of a work day, especially um, if you've been already on virtual meetings during the work day, it's um, not always something we look forward to, but we appreciate your time that you're investing into this. Thanks for an update on the master plan. Enjoyed, enjoyed having the pools and such. The pools. Oh, the poles. Yes, thank you. Glad, glad that you enjoyed the poles. We like to do them too. It definitely breaks it up and makes it more fun and more interactive. What is the time frame for this project? Well, I don't have an answer right now on when it might get built. Stay tuned to the website on that. Um, we will finish up for this portion of the project, the master plan portion of it, depending on the schedule of when we will meet with the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, we'll start moving towards getting the final master plan, in other words, combining the three concepts that we already have done into one final plan based on the input that we've heard. And then we'll work with the city and get to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. That's probably about a month out from now, maybe six weeks, just depending on when the advisory board meets. So we'll probably be done with this phase of the project in the next six to eight weeks. And then it'll move on to um, the city and when they're able to budget that. So stay tuned on the website for that and when the city thinks that they'll work the improvements and start to think about the final design of the park and construction. 
Uh, Josh, Joshua, thank you so much for the compliment for the Parks and Rec Department doing a great job. We agree. We think they do a really great job and not only in planning parks, but once they're built, maintaining the parks. The city of St. Cloud, and trust me, we see a lot of public park systems. They take a lot of pride. The, the residents take a lot of pride on their parks and the park staff takes a lot of pride in maintaining the parks. So True. I'm sure they appreciate the compliment. And we had a message from Janine to the panelists, just a comment that said, thank you for the time. Her family's excited and the parks are very important to the city. So we love to hear that. Just about one more minute and we're gonna wrap it up for the evening. We've got three people still on, so just wanna make sure y'all have one last opportunity to ask you anything you've got on your mind. Okay, we are going to go ahead and close it out. Thank you both, um, our last hanger on, <laughs> hanger oners for the for your time tonight, and thank you again to the City of St. Cloud staff for being with us tonight. We appreciate the support, and we'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night.